The reason why you want to upgrade to the new firmware is because of the thermal runaway protection. It's basically a fire protection hazard uh, for your safety. Um, but if you go here to the official Creality Facebook website group, it says here that so the version 1.1.6 is going to have it and here it says it's a 1.1.62 and then it's Ender 3, um, Ender 3 Pro. So these versions are going to have the thermal runaway protection. However, if you want to play around with your firmware, uh, maybe tweak it a, a bit. Or if you have problems with it, you may want to install a different version, try a different version. Uh, but if you're using this version and it's actually working well, uh, there is no reason to really uh, change the firmware. Unless again, you want to kind of like tweak it a little bit, uh, make it slightly better maybe. Or if you have problems with your version of firmware. I do have this version right here. 1.6.2 uh, so I really don't have to upgrade it um, however I am going to do this in this uh, video for the tutorial and um, I will be upgrading my Ender 3 at, to the BL Touch uh, just not in this video probably the next upcoming video um, that is why I'm going to just upgrade this uh, firmware and check it out first um, I want to check out this um, Hey guys, it's James and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade the Ender 3 uh, firmware. Uh, you're going to have to install a bootloader and then you're going to install the firmware. I'm going to be using the Marlin 2.0 version. One tip I'm going to give you, don't use this USB ISP. If you do decide to go through this route of using the USB ISP, you're going to have a lot of problems. Um, especially if you're using a Windows 8 or above. Um, actually, I don't even know Windows 8 was a thing. I didn't even know they rolled it out. You're going to have a major headache. You're going to spend countless hours trying to find the drivers, trying to uh, make it work. And um, even the um, going through the Chinese software, uh, their own software. Yeah, you're going to have a major headache. So don't use it. It's better for you to get a Arduino Uno like this. Maybe a little bit more expensive, but I, I think you should go with this route. It's going to be much easier, much simpler for you to uh, burn that bootloader. Remove the front screw. And remove the rear screw. Just be careful when you open the cover, the fan is going to be attached to the board. I'll put the link for these connectors in the description below. So here's a diagram for the connection from the Arduino to the board. All the connectors are going to be female to female, except the number two connector, which is going to be the male connector is going to go to the number 10 slot on the Arduino. Uh, please check the diagram. It is a little difficult to get the pins onto the board. Um, it may help if you have some tweezers. Um, if you don't, you may have to just finesse it a little bit and then try to get the pins in. Once you're done, you can plug in the USB cord to your laptop to power up the Arduino. You should see a blue light on the board. If you don't have this already, go ahead and download it with the downloads page. Here are the OS versions that you can choose from. Um, if you have, a, I have a Windows 10, so I got it from here. And then just download. It's going to take you to the Microsoft Store. And then 
you're gonna go ahead and um, install it and then I already installed it it's already on my computer then you're gonna go ahead and download this uh, Marlin 2.0 bug fix I am gonna be using this version right here so I am going to click on this download this one and then I'm gonna download the configuration files also um, you are gonna have to extract these so Marlin bug fix extract I can't stress enough how difficult it's gonna be if you try to use this USB ISP especially with the uh, newer Windows operating system and then we are going to Here's the bug fix and we are going to go ahead and extract the configuration of the bug fix. You are going to go to configuration and then you're going to look in configs and then you're going to go to the examples. And examples and then you're going to find your printer. Reality. Ender 3 and the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro are the, basically pretty much the same. So you can use this for Ender 3 Pro as well as Ender 3. You're going to go ahead and copy this. You're going to uh, paste it directly to this Marlin folder, the Marlin bug fix, bug fix point two, Marlin folder, and you're going to just replace these configuration files with these. Uh, Ender 3 configuration files. So we're going to go ahead and replace them and then we're going to start the Marlin um, INO with the Arduino IDE. So basically what we're going to do, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to program the Arduino as a programmer and then we're going to use that Arduino to put the bootloader on the Sanguino board and then we're going to uh, upload the firmware to the Sanguino board. So we're going to go here, go to these examples, and then we're going to go to Arduino ISP. You're going to click on that. And then when you click on that, you should get another pop-up of another instance of or sketch of the Arduino. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to Tools. And then you're going to choose for the board, the Arduino Uno. And then you want to go and select the COM that's available to you. And then you're going to go here and then go to AVR ISP MK2. Go ahead and click that. And then you're going to click on this arrow icon for upload. And then it's going to compile the sketch. As you can see from the status right here. It says done uploading. What you want to do is you want to go here to this website. I'll put the link below and then just go ahead and copy this uh, URL and then go back. And then on the preferences, that link that we just copied, go ahead and paste it into this uh, text box right here. It says additional board managers URL. And while we're here, what you can do is actually click on this uh, verify code, display numbers, and the compilation, just enable those. And then we're gonna click on okay. Uh, we're gonna go to tools, and then to the boards manager. I'm gonna go click okay. And then on here, we're gonna type in Sanguino. And then you're gonna install the version of Sanguino, the latest version. Um, I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, after you've installed it, uh, you can go ahead and find the Sanguino board and click on that. And then uh, you're going to go down and scroll down to the processor. And then click on this 18 mega 1284, uh, the 16 megahertz. Go ahead and click that. Again, make sure you have the comp selected. This is going to be different for uh, your computer. 
And then we're going to go here and then we're going to go ahead and click on the Arduino as ISP. Go ahead and click that. And then we're going to go here to the tools, manage libraries. And then on this text box, you're going to type in UAG lib. And then you're going to go down, find the version, and then you're going to go ahead and install it. I've already done that, so I'm going to close that. You want to go to Tools, Burn Bootloader. And then again, it gives you the status. It says Done Burning Bootloader. And when you're done with that, you can actually uh, take out your Arduino Uno. And then you can plug in your micro USB, uh, the USB cable directly into your printer. So I switched out the uh, USB cables from the Uno to the actual printer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close this window the, for the Arduino sketch, the ISP sketch, and then we're gonna use uh, directly the configuration H and then make the changes here. And then you can go through this configuration each file. You're gonna press Control F. And there are three. Let's see the board. It's already been defined. Um, basically, define means that it's going to run this code. Um, if you have two lines in front of it like this, that means it's been commented out and then it's for your eyes only or comments for like humans to read. That line is not going to be run. So this is the only important part that I see. Uh, just make sure that this one right here is actually enabled, the thermal runaway protection. And then it's already defined. So the four slashes has been commented out and then you can go ahead and read through some of these comments and then um, define or tweak your printer a little bit to how you want it so it looks like you really don't have to do too much to this uh, firmware what we can do is after you've uh, completed everything make sure you have the sanguino selected for the boards this uh, AT Mega 1284 and then, and because we switched out the USB cable from the Arduino to the printer, again, you're going to have to select a different COM and then change this uh, programmer to AVR ISP MK2. Once you've done that, you can actually compile or just upload. So let me just compile it first. And then I'm going to just move this up. And this is going to take a while. So grab something to eat or do something and then come back when it's done. I mean, it's going to take a couple of minutes maybe. But still, you know, it's going to be a while. Now, you may get a lot of errors like this. It's where it says error while detecting libraries included. And if you get like a direct, uh, temporary directory local, um, don't worry about that. Um, it has to do with the cache. If you go ahead and click on this again, compile it again, it's going to be much faster and you're going to see that there are no errors. It's compiling the sketch, done compiling, and as you can see, there were no errors. And then you can go ahead and upload this uh, sketch to the printer by pushing this arrow key. Then you have the status bar right here, and then you have the uploading right here. Just make sure this, uh, check on this left side, and then you can tell whether it's been uploaded or not. Again, it says uh, done uploading. 
it's all finished. At this point, you can actually uh, check your printer and see if everything is in working order. And then uh, close up your printer. If not, try to troubleshoot and try it again. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, what did you think of this video? Uh, leave a comment below. Thanks.